If you've ever taken apart an old phone charger or peeked inside a power cable, chances are you saw shiny copper wires tucked neatly inside. Maybe you've heard that silver conducts electricity even better than copper, but have you ever stopped to ask, why? What makes copper and silver so good at carrying electricity? And why don't we use silver everywhere if it's technically better? Let's dive into the electrifying world of conductivity and uncover what's going on at the atomic level and why these two metals are at the top of the conductivity food chain, right here on History of Simple Things. Before we talk about why silver and copper are elite conductors, we have to understand what electrical conductivity really means. Simply put, it's a material's ability to allow the flow of electric current, essentially how freely electrons can move through a substance. In metals, electrons aren't tightly bound to individual atoms. Instead, they're part of what's called an electron C, free to drift around. When you apply voltage across a metal, these loose electrons start moving in one direction. That movement is what we call electrical current. So a good conductor is a material where these free electrons can move easily without bumping into things and losing energy. In this regard, not all metals are created equal. Some offer a smoother ride for electrons than others. And that's where silver and copper shine, quite literally. Let's talk about silver first. In the Conductivity Olympics, silver takes the gold medal. It's the single most electrically conductive metal on the planet. No other metal lets electrons move through it more efficiently. But why? It all comes down to silver's atomic structure. Silver has one free electron in its outer shell, and it's very loosely bound to the atom. This means it can move around easily. On top of that, silver atoms are relatively large and spaced out just enough to let electrons zip through with minimal resistance. Another key factor is low resistivity. Electrical resistivity is basically the opposite of conductivity. It's a measure of how much a material resists the flow of electric current. Silver has the lowest resistivity of any metal, meaning electrons face almost no obstacles when moving through it. Despite all this, silver isn't used as widely as you might expect. Why? Two big reasons. It's expensive and it tarnishes. While tarnishing doesn't affect its conductivity too much, the cost definitely does. Using silver for household wiring would be like paving your driveway with gold. Copper may not beat silver in conductivity, but it comes in a very respectable second, and it's far more affordable. That's why it's the standard for electrical wiring, motors, transformers, and pretty much anything else that needs to carry a current. One of copper's biggest strengths is that it balances high conductivity with durability. It's malleable, meaning it can be bent and shaped without breaking, but it's also tough enough to last decades. Copper doesn't corrode easily, especially when it's coated or insulated, and it handles heat pretty well. This combination makes it ideal for long-term use in homes, vehicles, and electronics. What's more interesting is that copper's performance is good enough that the tiny improvement silver offers usually isn't worth the price difference. For most real-world applications, the extra cost doesn't bring enough benefit to justify switching. Now you might be wondering, if we want good conductivity, why not use gold or aluminum? Gold, after all, doesn't tarnish and is highly conductive, and aluminum is everywhere. It's cheap, lightweight, and found in many overhead power lines. Gold actually is a pretty good conductor, coming in third after silver and copper. It also resists corrosion better than both, which is why it's often used in high-end electronics like connectors and circuit boards, especially where reliability is critical. But again, 
Gold is very expensive, so it's used selectively, only where performance outweighs cost. Aluminum is a bit different. It's not as conductive as copper, but it's much lighter. This makes it ideal for applications where weight matters, like an aircraft, or for long-distance power lines, where less weight reduces tension on poles and towers. However, it has its drawbacks too. It expands and contracts more with temperature changes and can oxidize easily, which needs to be addressed with special connectors. Let's take a quick detour into the world of superconductors, materials that under certain conditions can carry electricity with absolutely zero resistance. Sounds like science fiction, right? But they're very real. The catch is that most superconductors only work at extremely low temperatures, close to absolute zero in fact. That makes them impractical for everyday wiring or appliances. They're used in specialized fields like MRI machines and particle accelerators. Compared to these exotic materials, copper and silver may seem modest, but their ability to perform well at room temperature without fancy equipment is what keeps them at the top of the game for practical, real-world use. So now that you know the science, take a moment to appreciate the quiet power of copper and silver in your daily life. Every time you flip a light switch, charge your phone, or run a fan, copper is silently working behind the scenes. And if you're using high-end audio cables or a fancy camera, there might be a touch of silver in there helping to deliver cleaner signals. Silver might be the best conductor in theory, but copper wins the real-world race, offering a perfect blend of performance, price, and practicality. In the end, it's a story of balance. Silver is the fastest runner, but copper is the dependable marathoner. Together, they represent the top tier of electrical materials, not just because of how well they conduct electricity, but because of how well they fit into our world. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.